Welcome to the Not Ready for Primetime News for Thursday, June 2nd, 2011. I'm Dick Fitzwell. 44 Lansing cops will be getting the pink slip due to budget cuts as Lansing tries to balance their 2012 budget. In all, 102 vacant positions will be eliminated, although 61 jobs could be saved if employees make $3.3 million in concessions. The medical Mary Jane debate continues in Lansing as yesterday's public safety committee meeting saw a two-to-one split over council member Carol Woods' wish to see pot dispensaries restricted to industrial zones. Council members Aylin Robinson and Tina Houghton opposed the restriction, siding with Mayor Verge Bernero's position that dispensaries be allowed anywhere outside of residential zones and be at least 500 feet apart or 1,000 feet away from a school or church. On Mackinac Island Wednesday, Governor Rick Snyder once again made the commitment to build a new publicly owned bridge between Detroit and Windsor, Ontario. The bridge is opposed by the Maroon family, owners of the Ambassador Bridge, who have voiced their opposition through a series of TV and radio ads the last few months. Legislation was unveiled in the State House yesterday to finance and build the bridge in cooperation with the Canadian government, who has pledged $550 million to the project. In Greater Depression news, the Dow dropped 280 points yesterday on news that the U.S. added only 38,000 jobs last month, housing prices continued to fall, and that U.S. manufacturing growth is at its slowest pace since October 2009. Unfortunately, Wall Street and Washington continue their neo-fascist circle jerk of austerity cuts and debt ceiling wrangling, as Peter Yastro, market strategist for Yastro Origer, told CNBC yesterday. You know, you see bad data, you see the Treasuries rally, you see all bonds and all fixed income rally, and then the people who are betting against U.S. economy, they start throwing money at getting bearish on stocks. It's a huge mistake. Interest rates are amazingly low, and that, thanks to Ben Bernanke, is driving everything. You know, I keep making them point. You know, there's a difference between Ben Bernanke and Harry Houdini. Ben Bernanke's not a magician. We're on the verge of a great, great depression. The Fed knows it. We have many, many homeowners who are totally underwater here and cannot get out from under. The technology frontier is limited right now. We definitely have an innovation slowdown and the economy is going to suffer. And all the Fed tweaking and all the interest rate tweaking and all of the tax adjustments are actually not going to be able to save us if we cannot get a cost of labor that's in line with the rest of the planet and we can't get our productivity levels high enough to justify the wages we're already getting paid. Whether Yastro is right or not remains to be seen. Mother Nature continues to wield her iron fist of fury as seven tornadoes hit Massachusetts yesterday, killing four people and prompting Governor Deval Patrick to declare a state of emergency. On a lighter note, World War III preseason action is heating up in Yemen. For that, we turn to Lansing and Beyond's chief foreign correspondent, Dmitry kutcher -Balzov. At least 41 people were killed Wednesday in street clashes as protesters squared off against police and military units loyal to President Ali Abdullah Saleh. Arab embassies were said to be evacuating their staffs, and the British Foreign Office was advising all Britons to leave the country while flights were still available, in a situation they described as, quote, worse than Libya, unquote. The Sunni-backed Saleh has said that the uprisings are sponsored by Shiite Iran. This escalation comes as NATO's mission creep to oust Muammar Gaddafi in Libya is now extended to September, and the United States continues to see its relationship with the governments of Pakistan and Afghanistan deteriorate because of civilian killing drone strikes and other unilateral actions by the U.S. military. Reporting from Yemen, Dmitry kutcher Bolzov for Lansing and Beyond.com. You can see details to these and other related news stories and our updates each day on our website, lansingandbeyond.com. At the sports desk, here's Miguel Akic de Sucondiz. The Detroit Tigers aborted the Minnesota Twins last night for the ninth consecutive time. Biggie Cabrera's 11th home run of the season, a three-run blast in the third inning, gave the Tigers the 4-2 victory. Greg Porcello got the win to move his record to 5-3. The Tigers open up a weekend series in Chicago tomorrow night versus the White Sox. The Vancouver Canucks knocked the Boston Bruins last night to take game one of the Stanley Cup Finals 1-0. Rafi Torres scored the game winner with 18.5 seconds left in the game. Game two is Saturday in Canada. The puck drops 8 p.m. After 19 seasons and four gigante rings, Shaquille O'Neal is retiring from the NBA. Miguel says goodbye to you, Shaq Fu. That is the sports. Back to you, Dick. Odile.
In I Wish I Was Still in Junior High news, a group of 15 to 20 Pennsylvania 8th graders were treated to lunch at a Hooters restaurant during a field trip to the National Aquarium in Baltimore last week. The children were taken by chaperones for their sightseeing lunch because no one restaurant could accommodate all 100 students in a single space. Berwick School Superintendent Wayne Brookhart says that while he wished the chaperones had chosen another restaurant, he hasn't received any parental complaints. Lansing area weather, partly cloudy Thursday with a high of 70. Tonight, dark and 51. Tomorrow, partly sunny, high 78. For Miguel Akic de Sucondis and Dimitri Kutcher Balzoff, I'm Dick Fitzwell. Turn off your TV and tune in your brain with the Not Ready for Primetime News anytime at LansingAndBeyond.com.